Let's go. And open questions about Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's membership in the ultra conservative House Freedom Caucus. So, nearly two weeks ago, members of the Freedom Caucus took a vote to oust the controversial Georgia Republican, reportedly due to her close relationship with Speaker Kevin McCarthy, as well as her profanity laced clash on the House floor with her Colorado colleague, Lauren Boebert. But here's the thing. We still don't know the outcome of that vote, and the usually outspoken Green is staying silent. Let's go to NBC's Capitol Hill, uh, Ali Vitale correspondent. Um, it, it, I, I want to know, do you know anything about this? Do you have the scoop? I mean, what's the latest on this inviting? <laughs> Yeah, look, this is not a normally quiet group of people. Typically, you talk to any of the members of the Freedom Caucus, and they are willing to dish on the Hill news of the day. But in this instance, as they were leaving town for a two-week recess, it appears that they did take a vote to oust Marjorie Taylor Greene from within their Freedom Caucus ranks. But it's unclear that they actually had the quorum, the numbers that they would have needed to do that. In atypical fashion, Greene is being silent, as you mentioned. And now there's questions about whether or not the chairman of that caucus, Scott Perry, has even been able to get in touch with Green to talk to her about this. Apparently, there were some missed calls, missed texts even before the vote, but certainly that's persisted after. So we expect that these two lawmakers are going to have a tete a tete when they get back to town. But even if you look at Marjorie Taylor Green's statement, I'll read to you a piece of it. She says, I serve Northwest Georgia first and serve no group in Washington. And then she sort of opaquely references the fact that the GOP has less than two years to show a America, what a strong, unified Republican-led Congress will do when President Trump wins the White House in 2024. She says, this is my focus, nothing else. But of course, it's important to point out what may have triggered this vote in the first place, which is the fact that Green went from being a flamethrower for people in House leadership like Kevin McCarthy to, earlier this year, almost being an ally to them, both in the speaker battle that took 15 rounds here for Kevin McCarthy, but then also in this latest debt ceiling fight. That was the center of it. And of course, that fight with Lauren Boebert certainly didn't help. How much do you want to bet that she has blocked Scott Perry's phone so that he can't get the number, right? And can't, can't get word to her. He has to officially let her know. I mean, it's possible. Just saying. Don't you think? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ali Vitale, thank you for that.